Thank you so much, Ashley. And thank you all for investing the time to be here today. I'm ex super ecstatic and excited to share these insights around connecting and inviting with all of you. So I want to encourage you, you would have received an email with a link to a handout. It looks sort of like this, minus the notes. And uh, so I wanted to encourage you to access that handout so that you can take notes and be able to lock in what you're learning. So thank you for your warm and loving welcome. I'm going to go ahead and find our PowerPoint here. I want to make sure that it shows successfully. So let me see. I'm going to do slideshow. And yep. can you still see us and yep. see the show? Okay, great. That's, that's an important piece. Sometimes I've you know, technology, I say technology is my friend. I claim technology as my friend. Sometimes it'll show the PowerPoint and not me, sometimes me and not the PowerPoint. So it's always good to clarify. <laughs> You're looking good and your slides look great. Great. Okay, great, Ashley. And then I'm hoping that you can keep an eye on the chat. So if we have questions or comments that come up for clarification, that we're able to address it because I'm going to be sharing and I may miss something and I want to make sure that we, we, we keep, um, we keep pace with all of you on the line. Yeah. So connect and invite, let's get ready. So sometimes what I like to do is especially because we're in the middle of the day and sometimes in the middle of the day, we get kind of this version of ourselves, <laughs> the, the, Oh my goodness, it's the middle of the day version. And what I'm looking for is this version of you. So I'd like for you to open up your mind, just do this. If you're driving, then um, let's do it with one hand. <laughs> so if you're in your office or you're in a place where you can literally do this, and it's okay if people are looking at you and saying, gosh, that looks weird. It's all right, because it's okay to be weird and successful versus the same and mediocre. So take your hands and open up your mind, and you're gonna also open up your heart to what you're about to experience. These concepts came from a request from people that were asking me, Grace, you know, you meet with people all over the world. How do you connect and invite them to do business with you? How do you connect with people in, in a way that leaves this positive and uplifted impression where people are excited to do business with you or refer business to you? And so they wanted the insights of, of how to meet and connect with more people and invite them to become a part of their world. And that's the purpose of, of our time together today is to share with you how to connect with people at a, at a level that it's, they're receptive, they're open, they have this open posture and also invite them. So we're gonna go through this process, the three-step process, and we're gonna get through as much as we can because with me and as a teacher, I am focused on what you're looking for and what you would like to gain and glean from this experience. What I found is, is that if I'm always focused on the curriculum or the content that I had planned to deliver to you, that may or may not serve you. So great facilitators are agile, they're flexible. They adapt and adjust to the audience, the people that are the recipients of the message so that we can leave this great impact that will propel your business forward. So that's my intention for today. Our focus is to quickly identify communication preferences. I want you to do this really quickly with me because you'll remember it. Quickly identify communication preferences. It's like, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to speak in a way that speaks the same language as this person. I'm going to connect with them in their preferred method of communicate with their preferred method of communication. You're also going to be able to clarify your message, clarify what you're looking to share so that it is what I like to call snappy. It's a snappy message. It's a, a sound bite. It's saying a lot with a little. See, sometimes we think, oh, we've got to fully explain every single detail and every single product and every single way benefit for hosting. And we go on and on and on and we can create confusion versus clarity. When people are confused, they tend to stand still. So do, remind, do this with me. When people are confused, they tend to stand still. When people have clarity, they tend to bounce forward. 
they tend to bounce forward. So the cl more clear your message is, the more able and easy it is to do business with you. The more able and easy it is to refer you business. So clarifying your message is very important. And I've, provi I've even written out some specific things that I'm going to share with you that are Norwex centric. That's right, we came up with a new word, Norwex centric. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Invite people to do business with you. So sometimes what happens is we share and we're excited about all that we have to offer and we tell them or we attempt to convince them. Selling is telling. Sharing and asking questions is engaging. And so sometimes we get to the point where we've shared a lot and we forgot to invite them to do business with us. We forgot to invite them on who, who would be a great client for you or someone that, 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 you, that they know that you would be, feel privileged to serve. So invite people to do business with you. And I was one of those people. It was like I was all about the delivery that I'd forget to invite. <laughs> so I'm speaking from personal experience. And that's why it's, it's made it to the focal point of our conversation today. Yes, I'm glad you like it. We've got a new hashtag, Norwex centric. <laughs> so I've got some Norwex centric insights for you as we progress. So strategies to communicate with impact and create valuable connections. Notice the word strategy. It's not like I am throwing some noodles up on the wall and hoping something sticks. Oh, let me just toss a few things out there and, and hope it works. Yeah, that is, can be known as a default, a default way of communicating with impact. So I'm hoping it lands versus I'm being strategic. I'm designing the way I'm communicating to serve this person and to add value and to build relationships, to create solid connections. So strategy, so I want you to write this down. This is a sound bite for you. So which do you prefer? Connections by design or connections by default? A life by design or a life by default? A life by design or a life by default? See. When we design it, it means that we've, we've got some thought put into it. We've created a plan. We have some ideas of, of what has worked in the past. Okay, this is a distinction. What has worked in the past, what is currently working, and what could work in the future. That right there is a great self-coaching question, and you're going to learn more about that at Leadership in January. So I want to give it to you again so you can practice because practice makes permanent. So you can practice these questions on yourself to formulate your strategy to communicate with impact and create valuable connections. So let me give you the questions again. What has worked in the past? As you're reflecting on what has worked in the past, what have, we, what have I done that I may not be doing now? Or what have I done in the past that worked so well and I kind of forgot about it? So what worked well in the past? Then asking yourself, what is working? What is currently working well? And it, may, it doesn't necessarily need to be working well for you. It could be you're borrowing it from someone else, but it's working well for others. So what is currently working well? And then the third question, again, this distinction question, is what could work? What could work? That taps into your creativity your possibility thinking, your sifting and sorting, your imagination. So these questions right there, those three questions are very strategic. I encourage you to ask them of yourself and to ask them of others. What, what's happening when you ask those questions is you have this full circle dialogue so that the most, the, the, the brilliant, strategic, insightful, creative ideas they level and up to the surface. Or as you can see here by these pictures, we can even say they bubble up to the surface. So 
here's a few thoughts that I wanted to share with you. Somebody's asking, is this being recorded? Yes, <laughs> this is being recorded. Okay, and let me see what else here. Um, it looks like we have one question, how to invite people to communicate with me? Can I have an example? Oh, yes, that's, what, oh my goodness, I love that you, uh, let's give her a virtual tip. Who is that? That was Evelina. Evelina, yeah. we're giving you a virtual tip because you are ahead of the game, my friend. It's right here. <laughs> so we're going to talk about how do you connect with people. Now, there are a few thoughts. One is, is to pick up what some people now with modern technology have hesitated with, and that is to pick up the phone. That is to pick up the phone and call because you care. Now, I, and the reason I'm saying this and I'm, the reason I'm putting such emphasis on this is because I was at an event and there were a group of people that said, I want to send you a text message of, of, of something that we're using as a, strat a communication strategy. Will you edit this? <laughs> Will you refine this? Will you make this, you know, make this enhanced, okay? And I said, let me take a look at it. Now, I learned a great lesson with that. I took a look at it, sent my, gave them back my feedback on my compassionate feedback on the text, revised it, and they were like, oh my goodness, we are good to go. I did not clarify in that interaction what sequence was this text message going to be in. And what I did not realize was that was their first point of contact. It was the text. And they were like, Grace, this isn't working the way we thought it would. I, and I said, please clarify for me a little bit about that. And they shared with me that was their first point of contact. Well, first point of contact, I encourage you to not be a text. I encourage you, your first point of contact to be personable to pick up the phone and to call and connect. What I call, like to call with my children, that's right, my eight children, human contact, <laughs> human connection. People carry their phones with them everywhere, so they're likely to pick it up. Now you're probably saying, well, what do I say once they pick it up? Well, I'm gonna share with you. And this is not based on theory. This is based on practice because this is what I do when I meet someone and I follow up with them to connect with them over the phone. It's very simple and I am going to repeat it because some of you are like, can you talk a little bit slower? <laughs> so I, I wanna, I'm going to repeat this phrase so that you have it. So first things first, I, when I pick up the phone, I'm gonna call and say my first name. I'm gonna ask for them, so I'm gonna say their first name. Hi, mate. Um, hi, this is Grace. So when they, I'll, I'll ask for their name, I'll say, hi, is Sarah there? And I'll use only her first name. First and last name often builds a, a wall really quickly because they're like, oh my goodness, who is this and why are you calling me? Friends call people by their first name. They don't call them by their first and last name. So I'm going to ask for them. So I'm going to say, hi, Sarah, this is Grace. We met the other day at and wherever we met. So if we met at the grocery store line, if we met, let's say we met at, uh, at Costco. So we met at Costco in line. This is Grace. We met at Costco in line the other day. I want to ensure that this is a good time. I'm calling to speak with you for two to three minutes. Notice, notice there's a few things. Hi, this is Grace. I'm not saying, I'm not going into too many details. I'm reminding her or him of where we met. So we met in line at, in, at Costco. And I want to ensure, notice I didn't ask the question. I didn't say, is this a good time? Is this a bad time? Is this a friendly time? Is this a happy time? I'm not asking that. I'm, at, I'm making a statement. I want to ensure that this is a good time. I want to ensure that this is a good time. I'm calling to speak with you for two to three minutes. What that little statement does with the request of I'm calling to speak with you for two to three minutes, especially for the busy individual, two to three minutes, oh my goodness, that sounds snappy, that sounds quick, that sounds respectful. 
it, what happens is, is if we don't give a time frame when we call a person, a person that's in the middle of something could be like, oh my gosh, they've invaded my time. They're invading my territory. They're calling me and I am so busy. Don't they know how busy I am? She's thinking about her inner dialogue. The voice she is hearing is her own. Versus when we say, I'm calling to speak for two to three minutes, or I'm calling to connect for two to three minutes. What I'm saying is, I thought about what I'm going to share with you. That's number one. I put some thought into it. Number two, she knows, okay, this is not going to be a 30 minute steal my time. This is not going to be a 30 minute time robbery. She just took life, the, the, the day from me. So she, that resistance, it's almost like the walls or the weapons drop. Also, notice the word speak. In our profession, back in the day, and even recently, people have used the term chat. Let's chat. And I think it's because of social media. Oh, I want to chat with this person. A business person or a professional or someone that's on a timetable or has what they, we call an abundant life, they, they don't want to chat. They're like, I don't have chat. I don't have time for casual conversation in the middle of the day. You want to speak with me? You want to have a conversation with me? You want to connect with me? I'm open. Chatting, I don't have time for casual conversation. So that very posture, my friends, of connect, speak, interact, uh, have a conversation with this person, wow, what an impact that can have on them. And again, creating receptivity versus can we chat? Uh, so what it also does is it creates less, because sometimes when they get on the phone with us and they don't have a timetable, they think it was an hour and it was literally 30 seconds. <laughs> we, just, we just spoke for 30 seconds and it felt like an eternity to them. So that also will lessen the, 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 the barrier. Now, key ingredient, my friends, is that I didn't say one minute. The reason I didn't say one minute is because it's, it can be very challenging to build rapport, create connection, even ask a question in one minute and get a response. Two to three minutes, you'll likely be able to ask a question and get a response or share something and ask a question and get a response. And so when you come to that three minute mark, what I encourage you to do is to share with them, looks like we're coming up on that three minutes that I, had, that I had promised. Is it okay to continue? Or shall we reschedule for a time later today or tomorrow? Every single conversation that I've had, because again, we can uplift a room. Do they smile when we walk in? Or do they smile when we walk out? Do they smile when they hear from us? Or do they frown when they hear from us? So that distinction of if they're enjoying the conversation, they are likely to continue. And if they don't have the time right now at this moment, because they've enjoyed the conversation, they're likely to set a time for later in the day, that day, or the next day. I encourage you though to be, um, ex ex accelerate, accelerate the conversation, ensure that it's either today or tomorrow because that enthusiasm will still be, their enthusiasm for this initial conversation will still be elevated. And when I request, if it is going to be rescheduled, I request for 10 to 15 minutes, a brief conversation, 10 to 15 minutes at the very most. So questions, thoughts, or comments on what I've shared with you so far. I'd love to hear questions or I want to be able to clarify anything with regards to that statement. They're loving Jessica. it so far. Jessica loves it. Deanna said, if they don't answer, is that the same message you would leave? Oh, great question. So no, it's not. <laughs> um, if they don't answer, what I'm doing is I'm stating my name. So I'm stating, hi, Sarah. So very casual. Hi, Sarah. This is Grace. We met at, um, we met at Costco. My goodness, Costco is getting a major plug here with Normex today. <laughs> Sorry. You could say a networking event, wherever it was. We met at the playground. <laughs> so, 
Hi, hi, Sarah. This is Grace. We met at the playground the other day. I was calling to speak with you for two to three minutes. And, and so again, hi, this is Grace. We met at the playground. I was calling to speak with you for two to three minutes. My phone number is, and I'm going to repeat it twice. I'm looking forward to connecting with you, or I'm looking forward to speaking with you. And again, it's very upbeat. You may even want to put a mirror or something like a, an emoji smiley face. I've got those. They've got post-it notes out there with emojis on it. They're fantastic. I can place that on, on your, near your phone. And so when you pick it up, it reminds you, okay, smile. Okay, bring your best to this conversation. Okay, bring the greatest version of you to this call right now, Grace. So be the person that you would like, be that, be that person that you would like to be around more. All right, be that person that you would like to share your time with and pick up that phone. And so I'm repeating my phone number twice. Now, if I'm leaving a longer message, I am likely going to leave my phone number in the beginning and again at the end. So if I'm doing, maybe it's a follow-up and, and a gratitude and thanking someone for their recent order and, 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 and you want to check in on how things are, are progressing, let's say with their, um, with their wand. Uh, oh gosh, that's my favorite tool. I'm going to get the right name on it. It's my favorite tool. My wand, you know what I'm talking about. I, I can get the corners. I wrote it down. Oh, your Enviro wand. My Enviro wand. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, you were talking like I wrote it down. Like it was electronically magical. And I was like, what are you <laughs> talking about? I mean, it's pretty close to being magical. Yes, the Enviro wand. Yes, the Enviro wand. <laughs> I love that. it too. Yes, it is my favorite go-to tool. And my children actually love it as well. I'm like, okay, where is the Enviro wand? Because they're, they run around with it and they're, you know, they're supporting the process. That's Anyways, so the Enviro wand. So if I'm calling to connect with them and to talk about their Enviro wand, you know, and I, I wanted to see how things are coming along with your Enviro wand, you know, and, and taking care of those, those cobwebs that were not decor for the recent holiday that took place. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. So keeping it fun and fresh, if I'm going to have a little bit of a longer message, I'm going to, I'm going to mention my phone number in the beginning. So I'm going to have my name. I'm going to have the reason I'm calling. I'm going to have my phone number. And then I'm going to leave my brief message and then repeat my phone number. The reason why is because sometimes some phone systems don't allow the rewind or it's not easy for it to fast forward or rewind or people don't want to go back and re-listen to the message to get your phone number. So having it in the beginning and at the end, if they do find themselves wanting to replay it, it'll make it easier. So that is a solution for leaving a voice a voicemail. And the other, um, the other point that I, uh, that I wanted to bring up is if you choose to, if you have their cell phone number, is to let them know that you're going to be sending a follow-up, a brief follow-up text. And when I say brief, I mean brief. A few, uh, people don't read, it's challenging to read dissertation texts. I mean, it, they, they go on for days. I mean, you all know you've been there, you've seen them, you've witnessed them, you've probably even sent them in the past. So, if keep the, the text brief, all right? So if I'm, if I'm taking that approach, I'm going to let them know, and I'm gonna follow up with a brief text to, um, to ensure that you receive my message. And because sometimes people don't listen to their voicemail anymore. They just don't, or it takes them longer to listen to it. So I'm gonna share with you some other ideas that I think will be supportive. The key though, my friends on connecting is consistency counts. Consistency counts. And I learned this actually, I was listening to a program I love, I'm an audible, oh, I love audibles. I, I could listen to an audible, I, well actually I couldn't, I do. <laughs> I listen to audibles every single day. And I'm listening to and the audibles is, is an Amazon book app where you can access, access a, a number of books in audio format. See, 
I've had books. I'm, a, I'm an avid reader and I've had books for years. The challenge was, was that finding the time to read the book and sit down and read it, I, I wasn't finding a lot of, of open time for that. And so and unless I'm reading to my children, that's right. I have, a, I have a book that I'm reading right now that I'm reading to my children. It's a great way to multitask in the best form possible. <laughs> Anyways, so audibles, listening to audibles. There's an audible that I'm going to share with you. It's called Sell It Like Sirhant. This gentleman sells real estate. He was on some show. Uh, and he got I never a met- million dollar listing. Yes. Oh, bravo. Right. Yes. Sirhant. And his show is still on Bravo. Oh, I didn't fantastic. know he had a book. Okay. He yeah. has a book, Ashley. Oh, wow. yes, he does. Sell it like Sirhant. And he was talking about how he sold, I think, in his first year. I think it was he um, made $9,000 in his first year in, in doing his business. And then he, he turned it into a, a very large business. And he shared with people how to share or engage the purchase. And one of his strategies resonated with me so to the core that I adopted it. And, and, that, and that's something to think about. So anytime you pick up a book, anytime you come onto a webinar like this, anytime you're exposed to new knowledge, remember this. What you input, you output. What you input, you output. So when I, I, anytime I pick up a book or anytime I listen to a program, I'm like thinking to myself, I am going to learn something today. I'm going to learn a multitude of things today. And when we're learning, we're growing. When we're learning, we're growing, we're expanding our knowledge. And that is, that people can't take that as away from us. We will have that forever and always as a tool going forward. I was listening to, okay, so I'll get back to this. I, this is an important point though. I was listening to something and someone went up to Picasso. This, this was another audible that I was listening to. Anyways, somebody went up to Picasso and he said, and, and he drew something on a napkin and the person said, well, you know, how much would something like that cost? And he said, well, $20,000. And she said, it took you less than five minutes. How could you possibly sell a napkin piece of art for $20,000? And Picasso said, oh no, it's not the five minutes it took me to draw it on this napkin. It is the lifetime of practice. It is the lifetime of refining my skill that brought me to this point. And so that's what I'm going to share with you. It is practice makes permanent, my friends. It is, it is what you are doing every day to further your life and further your business and further your knowledge. It is cumulative. It is cumulative. So remember that even if someone says no, or if it doesn't go according to plan, it's cumulative. It's like, oh my goodness, I figured out another way that something doesn't work. That was my prototype. As Dyson would say, Dyson, that that vacuum cleaning system, over 5,100 plus, plus, plus prototypes. He did not stop when he had one prototype that didn't work. Or one person that said, no, this thing, that, this thing really does suck in the worst way. <laughs> I'm sorry, you got to have fun. I mean, if I can't laugh, you know what I mean? And so one, one prototype, 10 prototypes. He went on for 5,000 plus prototypes. So when the things don't go according to plan, hey, that was a prototype. All right, so. Picasso, I went from Picasso to Dyson's back to Ryan Serhant. See, we, it, there's a flow here. We left you. <laughs> We're coming back to Ryan Serhant and sell it like Serhant. Anyways, one of his consistent strategies that I adopted with vigor and enthusiasm, I think it was almost six months ago, and I'm continuing to do it today, is to have a daily list of people that I choose to impact a daily list of people that I choose to impact. So what that means is, is before I start my day, I have a list. And so I actually brought my list here for all y'all. See, that was a Texan term. Did you like that, Ashley? All y'all? You used it perfectly. <laughs> okay, so here's my list and, 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 it, and it goes on. And I use it, I use color. 
So some of you are like, gosh, that's so old school. It's paper. Okay. Here's a list for me for today. This is so after I'm done, I, after I've completed our conversation today, I'm getting on this list and I'm going to go one by one by one. Now there's, I think there's 35 so far on this list, I've got more to add to it. These are people now, and I may not contact every single one of them today. And if I don't, they're going to transition to my next day. The key is, is that I am having a creating a proactive business versus reacting to what email or what phone calls or what's already in my schedule. These are outbound contacts and connections that, that are going to be a part of my day. Ryan, he does 35 outbounds every single day. That was what he said. And I said, okay, well, if he does 35, I'm doing 40 plus 40 and beyond. And I've done that. And some days I do more and some days I do a little less. I consistently though have my list of 40 and I find a way to follow through with that every single day. So that what's happening is, is your outbound connections and reaching out are what creates and fuels the momentum for your next, for, you, for your business today, tomorrow and ongoing. A business that's in momentum is so much easier to move than a business that is standing still. A business that is in momentum is so much easier to move. And so having, these li having this list, I know who I'm gonna reach out to. So I'll either place it in my calendar so that it's in my calendar with all of their contact details and, and they will be in there. So I know this is sacred time. These are people that I'm gonna be reaching out to. Or I'll have it on a one sheet that I can leave myself notations of and make it for the next day. The reason why I like to handwrite it is because I can remember it. So oftentimes I know who I'm gonna call before I even look down at my list. The other thing that I've noticed too with this, the very activity of writing down, it's very interesting. When I reach out to people that I've written on my list, they're like, Grace, I was just thinking about you the other day, or, oh, I was meaning to call you, or, oh my gosh, I'm so happy to hear from you. You were coming to my mind last week whatever it may be. So writing the, their names down, their contact information, practice makes permanent. I also carry a book with me everywhere I go. It's my, it, it has my goals for the year, my vision. So I'm going to be replacing that book. That book has seen, has seen many nations and countries and, and many places over the last year. And it will, I will transition into my new year's book. Uh, as I'm driving or not when I'm driving, when I'm like standing or waiting for a child or um, I'm, I'm in line for something, I'll be jotting down some notes of ideas of people that come to mind. So again, if you and would do this, if you would be willing to do this exercise, you will have a list of people to reach out to. Now I'm either picking up the phone and calling them. I am, can you see both? Oh. Oh, someone's saying they can't see me. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Are you guys able to see um, Grace, like a, her little video and her slide? Yep. Okay, most oh. people can. We're good. Okay, good. Just yeah, sure. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I see me. <laughs> lots of yeses. Lots of yeses. Awesome. Okay, good. All right, good. Well, so anyways, having that list, having that list to be proactive in your business and reaching out. So these are outbound conversations. So whether that is I'm sending an email, I'm picking up the phone, I'm inviting someone to something. And so let's, I wanted to share with you having a list and whatever your sweet spot number is, start with that, set yourself up for success. And so that when you look at that list, you're happy about it. You feel like I've accomplished something. I'm sharing with you what I'm doing so you know, this isn't a theory, this is actually an activity of practice. If you want to think about, um, if you want a quick activity, I can do it with you right now, actually on this, on this poster board. Quick activity to spur up who to reach and how to, how to meet them, how to find them. I, I'm gonna give you a few tips, okay? So what I want you to think about is, and you, I want you to interact with me. I want to know what, uh, what is a quality or an attribute of someone that you would like to serve as a customer or as a team member? A quality or attribute, something that, you know, you really appreciate 
a quality of, uh, and you would like to be around that more. Let me hear. Honest. Okay. Honest. So what I want you to do is as an activity, this is your integrity. I've got another word, integrity, integrity, integrity. Okay. So that's another topic. What else? Positive. Yeah, Enthousi positive. Enthusiastic. I see a few times. Enthusiastic. Yes. So enthuse. Okay. So what we're going to do is when you come up with these categories of people you prefer to be in their space, you want to be around them. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to write names of people that you know or people that know people that have this quality or attribute. So what I, what I, we call this with the DSVA, it's called the exponential contact list. This is an ever growing, ever evolving list of people that you can reach out to. So when I think about honest people that are in my space, I think about my friend, Sarah. So I'm going to write her name down, Sarah. Sarah's come up a lot today because she's on my list. Uh, honest, honest people, Karen, my friend, Karen. So I'm going to write down their names. I'm going to rule them in before I rule them out. So in each of these categories, you could say, um, loves to clean, does not love to clean, <laughs> loves, uh, loves our earth and is